In this section, we're going to be looking at the brain and its cranial nerves. Uh, towards the end of the PowerPoint, we discuss the 12 pairs of cranial nerves. But before we get there, we're going to talk about the brain. And as you can imagine, we're only going to be able to scratch the surface, as the brain is the most complicated organ in the body. It's often referred to as the control center. Um, it receives many senses, interprets those sensations, uh, correlates them with one another, uh, uses stored information to make decisions and take actions. Uh, it also houses your intelligence, a uh, system involved in your emotions, behavior, and memory. So what we're going to do is take a look at the brain, look at its structure overall, but also divide it up into the major regions of the brain. And for each region, we're going to try to stick to the top one or two functions of that region. Although, keep in the back of your mind, these regions have many, many more functions than we're going to have time to discuss. What I'm going to use is this picture. This is a, a picture of a real human brain where they've highlighted the different regions. Uh, but technically, you should be able to identify these regions in really any picture. Uh, you'll come across multiple pictures of the brain uh, in your textbook, in your lab book, and in this PowerPoint. But what we typically want to do is start at the spinal cord. Most images of the brain, most drawings, will leave a little bit of the spinal cord there, um, and then we'll move up from that spinal cord. When we do this, we run into the region known as the brain stem. But the brain stem is divided into three parts. And we're going to move from the inferior region up towards the more superior region of the brain stem. First region we would come across is called the medulla oblongata. The medulla oblongata, we're going to discuss three major functions. The first two happen to be vital control centers. Vital meaning you cannot live without them. The first one are respiratory control centers. Uh, specifically, there's an inspiratory control center, which leads to inhalation. And then there's an expiratory control center, which leads to exhalation. But these together regulate your breathing. So there are respiratory control centers in the medulla. There's also cardiovascular control center. Cardio referring to the heart in that it controls the force of muscle contractions as well as the heart rate. And then the vascular component controls blood vessel diameter. Blood vessel diameter is the size of the blood vessel which influences your blood pressure. For instance, if you decrease the diameter of a blood vessel, we call that vasoconstriction, that leads to an increase in blood pressure. If we need to lower blood pressure, we would dilate the blood vessels. But this is all emanating from the medulla oblongata. Finally, the third major function are a variety of reflexes, uh, such as coughing, swallowing, vomiting, hiccuping, and sneezing. So there's your medulla oblongata. It's just above the spinal cord. If we move above the medulla, there's this large rounded structure, uh, which is, makes up a portion of what's known as the pons. The pons is a bridge-shaped bulge between the medulla and the midbrain. This bulge has a lot of neurons, a lot of fibers that are going to connect the spinal cord and medulla to upper parts of the brain. So there's not a whole lot of function, integration, in the pons, but more of a relay up to upper parts of the brain. For example, we need to send impulses to the cerebrum, which is the large, highly folded 
area of the brain, but also the cerebellum. So a lot of fibers are going through that pons to reach those regions. The one function other than transmission of nerve impulses is there are some respiratory centers located in the pons that assist the medulla in our breathing patterns. We'll talk more about that in AMP2 when we get to the respiratory center or respiratory system. The most superior region of the brainstem is known as the midbrain. The midbrain contains two components. One are the cerebral peduncles, and the word peduncle means a connection because it also has fibers that have to run through it to connect to upper parts of the brain. And that's more of these regions here. So we've got a lot of fibers coming up from the spinal cord, through the medulla, through the pons, through the midbrain to get to upper parts of the brain. Posteriorly located, where I have the arrow, are the colliculi. There's a superior colliculi, and then below it, there's a smaller inferior colliculi. The colliculi look like little mounds projecting off the back or posterior part of the midbrain. Interesting enough, these colliculi are also involved in reflexes, but they're in response to either a, a visual stimulus that might endanger you or an auditory stimulus, a sound. So for instance, the superior colliculi provide reflex movements of the head and eyes in response to a visual stimulus. If you think about going to a sporting event and say a baseball gets hit in your direction, your quick response to that baseball coming at you is, is mediated by the superior colliculi. What happens is it allows you to move your head away from the object to avoid being hit, but also track the object. It allows you to orient your eyes onto the object so you can see it very quickly and respond appropriately. The inferior colliculi are very similar, but the stimulus is auditory. So if there's a loud sound, we often say we jump out of our seat or we, we'll, we'll move the, the head and trunk very quickly to avoid that possible danger. Um, so it's, it's movement of the head and trunk in response to a loud noise. The next video we're going to talk about the diencephalon, which is this central region of the brain uh, located just above, just superior to the midbrain.